Wow, thank you so much for inviting us here. Um, it's a true honor. I'm actually a little bit nervous. So I'm just going to imagine you, all of you naked, and then it disappears. I, I will do the same thing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, well, before we start, we'll just show you a short video uh, about what it's all about. It's all about love and passion. So uh, here you go, one and a half minutes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you see, that was actually uh, Hella driving the car. She's uh, <laughs> a typical Danish driver. No, but uh, you know, what, why we're doing this talk is because we believe that in communicating whatever you do, whether it's business or whether it's science, love is a very important factor, something that we need to spread out. Because without love, I mean, none of us would actually be here today. When we met, we wanted to make a difference. A difference that really mattered with a true impact. So with all the love between us, um, we sat down and said, okay, we'll make that project. That one project, that is our dream. And then we came up with a mantra that goes, what you love, you will protect. We decided to do some expeditions, five years, seven continents, 26 expeditions, to document some of the last wild places. But to make a difference, what do we do? We're going to do an exhibition, and we're going to do a big book. So we looked into what is the tool of power today? What is the real symbol of power? And it showed out to be a pen. So we called Monte Grappa and we said, what do you guys think about doing a wild pen? And they were like, yeah, cool, let's do it. So two weeks later, we were sitting there designing a pen. And in 2019, we will present this book to business leaders and presidents around the world, together with the Monte Grappa pen, and we will say, in this book, you will be able to see the document of the world's last wild places. With this pen, you will have the power to protect it. And please, use only this pen when you sign something with your heart. That's the important part. This planet, it's worth protecting, because it's a lot more than just us. It's not just people, it's wildlife. It's ecosystems. I mean, where else do we have beautiful pink birds dancing on blue lakes in Africa? And these amazing, colorful monkeys. This is the magical mandrel of Gabon, hiding in the jungle. Yeah. A few years back, we were sailing down a river in Borneo. We were close to oil palm plantations. We met this little fellow, six months old. He was dying because he had lost his mother. He had lost his mother because at the oil palm plantations nearby, workers have paid $50 for that orangutan because they ruined the oil palms. We need to stop stuff like that. Everything on this planet is interconnected. This is what we call biodiversity, and we need to protect that for all costs. If we disrupt it, we will disrupt this irreversible circle of life. 
these are the kind of images that we want to produce as photographers because we do believe in positivity. No more dead rhinos, no more dead elephants. Positive images that evoke feelings, that evokes love, like this mother mandrill looking at his little child. But you see, some images are way more difficult to get than others. For these ones, we had to travel seven days over open ocean. I mean, that's how amazing the planet is. That's how huge it is. Seven days on open oceans to photograph these emperor penguins. We were lucky we found them on ice flow in beautiful light. And the Ross Sea itself is an amazing story because that's one of the first places on this planet where we as humans has actually collaborated in saving a piece of nature. The Ross Sea has just become a national park. No fishing, no mining, no nothing. That's amazing and a great collaboration between countries. We were on assignment for National Geographic on the other side of the pole in the Arctic, in Greenland, and uh, I was actually flying with the, the Navy helicopter and you are strapped to the inside of a helicopter and you are wearing the survival suit and you're lying on your stomach like this and then you're ready and you slide open the door and then you see the, you see the whole of the Arctic there. And, and this is a snowstorm, 23 meters per second, and the snowstorm is not like this, it's like this, just blowing everything. And you look, wow, this is so forceful, but yes, so fragile. This polar bear, he is what everybody loves and what everybody protects. Besides the polar bears, besides the pandas, we also need to tell the stories about the other wildlife. I had strapped myself onto a motorized boat and I was being dragged on a rope through the Arctic Ocean when this guy came at me. He came from the murky depths, this Arctic angel chirping and clicking on his way towards me. I was actually a bit scared because they're six meters long. When I came up in the boat, I was amazed. I said to the boat driver, I said, that's amazing, they're smiling all the time. And he said to me, just remember, they also smile when they kill. Yeah, <laughs> and you don't really think about becoming food, but um, we have photographed in the Arctic for more than 20 years, and we've seen how the white, immense icebergs has gotten smaller and smaller. And in the green jungles of the equatorial regions, all the jungle is getting uh, destroyed by deforestation. Deforestation, that's a difficult word to that's say. Word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but just imagine this beautiful planet without all of this. We work with indigenous people all over the planet. They seem to have uncovered the secret of how to live with the world in balance. But in some places, like in Borneo, the Dayak people living there, they've been living with the jungle for so many years. They respected it, but now they're selling out to oil palm companies. Why? Because they want cars and motorbikes. When we spoke to them, they're really sad about their old home being lost today. We seem to have lost that ancient wisdom of living in balance with nature. In fact, try to think about it, we are actually all nature, we are all a part of it. We need to reconnect our heart with our mind and find that balance again. And in the end, in Borneo, we actually did find wild orangutans. As we were sailing through the flooded forest in our canoe, we met this guy. He was walking, wading through the water and reminded us really of ancient man. I mean, it was like watching my father. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, later, that next day, we met a group of four orangutans and this female came down and she was cooling down. She sat next to the water. We let our canoe drift towards her and she started to cool down by putting water over her wrists. I mean, these, they are our cousins, they are our brothers, as is any insect or larger animal. And we need to remember that in everything we do. There is no doubt in either me or Yuri that we are on the right mission because we do believe that with love we can rewrite the future of our planet. Yeah, but we need you guys as well. I mean, we need all of us to love the planet, to love what we do because I believe that all of you are working to make this planet a better place. So don't forget, what you love, you will protect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.